It's been a while since I've talked about my iPad workflow, but I have been reaching for it a lot lately. I've found some new apps that I've been really enjoying that I've integrated into my workflow that are great for not just productivity, but creativity as well. So I wanted to share with you some of those apps in case you have also been looking for new ways to use your iPad. Also, I wanted to show you the new wallpaper that is in my shop. This is the Mochi series. I'm obsessed with this minty, very spring inspired version, but there's a couple of different color variations. So if you like my mochi wallpaper, you can find it linked in the description box below. There was a long period where I had my iPad and I felt like I just didn't have enough use cases for it. But ever since I started to use these specific apps, I feel like I've actually been able to incorporate it into my daily workflow a lot better. So hopefully if you're also having issues trying to find what to use your iPad for, this will help. The first app that I've been using a lot has been Obsidian along with Obsidian Sync. You might be wondering, Angel, why do you need another note-taking app? You have Notion, you have Apple Notes. There are so many like note-taking apps that I've used in the past, but Obsidian feels really different because it has this visual aspect that puts all of your thoughts, all of your notes onto this map that you can connect with lines, which really helps with my thinking process as well as building somewhat of a digital garden. I feel like the word digital garden has been a buzzword lately, but I really do enjoy just kind of keeping more of my knowledge based notes in Obsidian because I can connect it to other themes, topics, ideas, and really get a nice picture of what goes on in my head. Now I will say I do like it a lot better with Obsidian Sync, which is the subscription based syncing function that it has. If you are just using Obsidian on your laptop, it is free, but if you want to sync it to your phone and to your iPad, you will have to pay for Obsidian Sync, which is a small fee, but I really do like that now I can bring my entire digital garden onto my devices. The next two apps kind of go hand in hand for me. I've been using both for a really, really long time, but them working together has been a game changer for my creative process. And those apps are Pinterest and Milanote. You've probably heard of both already, but I just love using Milanote kind of as a visual plan and kind of starting point for any of my creative projects. So I will save color palettes, ideas, mood boards, lists, to-do lists, all of that that kind of comes with the beginning of a project into Milano. And I will quite literally use it to plan anything, whether it's redecorating my home, whether it's planning outfits for a trip, or if it's for a new design project that I'm working on for a client. Now Pinterest comes in because Pinterest is where I go for all of my inspirational photos. I will look at graphic design, I will look at maybe magazine layouts, text layouts, I will look at more visual things like travel photos, outfit photos. If you work in social media, it's a great place to gather photography inspiration. Plus the Pinterest app feels really intuitive on the iPad. I actually like to use Pinterest the best on my iPad, even compared to my phone and my laptop. There's just something about being able to scroll, being able to save very quickly, the gestures, all of it just feels feels very intuitive. My main use case for my iPad is for ideating and writing and a little bit of drawing and storyboarding. So I have been really, really enjoying using the ChatGPT app with my iPad. I want to say when they first came out with the mobile and the iPad apps, it wasn't that great. They really made a lot of improvements to the app so that it more accurately reflects the experience that you get on desktop. It obviously syncs via your OpenAI account, so you never have to worry about any of your chats with ChatGPT going missing. I also really love that they have the folder organization function now so that I can kind of keep my chats organized and it's not just this long list of questions that I've asked ChatGPT. I use ChatGPT a lot to flesh out ideas, to go over different aspects of a story, to make sure that I am covering all the bases, to make sure that I am like linking that story from start to finish very thoroughly. I also love plugging in some of my like existing content into ChatGPT and asking it to help me figure out what other pieces of content 
content can I build from this? As somebody who is on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, a writing of Substack, it is nice just kind of having a second brain to help me map out all the content that I am currently creating and figuring out how I can repurpose it. I have been testing out a few other AI apps as well, like Perplexity and Claude. I hear that Perplexity is really great for research and Claude is really great for more formal writing. So if you want to review on those when I kind of get the hang of them and see what I like about them, let me know because I would love to talk about it a little bit more. I will be transparent and say that it took me a long time to figure out how I could integrate ChatGPT into my workflow, but now I do lean pretty heavily on it just to fact check and to do research for my content. Having a solid AI toolkit can really help you save a lot of hours. It can help you be more creative and it can help you grow your business or your freelancing. But I think the most important part is that you find the right tools for your needs. I recently found this free HubSpot resource that gives you 40 plus paid and free AI tools that are categorized into different needs and use cases. I found quite a few tools that I've been testing out lately for different uses. So marketing, writing, imagery, ideating. So if you also have been wondering how you can utilize AI more in your current workflow to really supercharge that workflow, definitely check out that free resource. I'll have it linked in the description box below. A new app that I've recently found is Do Marks. Do Marks is like if bookmarks and to-do list had a baby. It's that perfect in between and it syncs across your iCloud so that you don't have to sign into anything. You just download the app on your devices if you have Apple devices and it just works seamlessly. But what I really like about it is it's easy to use. The user interface is simple, it's minimal and it turns all of your bookmarks into a checklist, like a to-do list. So for me, that's super useful because sometimes when I'm using other bookmarks, tools I will go back and look at the stuff that I've maybe half read or read and not know what I've already gone through because there's so many articles and videos and courses that I save so do marks is really handy because I can easily see okay this one I read this one I haven't and know exactly what's going on within my bookmarks app of all of the bookmarking tools that I've tried I've definitely enjoyed do marks the most and it kind of just shows that sometimes less is more and simple apps are just better the next one is a fun one because it is a wardrobe categorization and cataloging app. It's called Index. I discovered it on my phone, but I actually find that I prefer it on my iPad just because you have more screen real estate, you can see more things at once. But Index is really cool because it allows you to catalog your entire wardrobe. So if you're somebody who is fashion forward, if you care about your personal style, and you find that sometimes you forget about certain pieces in your wardrobe and you want to be able to give you know, all of your pieces equal love, this is great for that. Essentially, you can take a picture or save a photo from the online shop for that item that you own and bring it into Index. And then once you have cataloged your entire wardrobe, all of the pieces that you own, they make it so easy for you to create outfits, to plan packing lists for trips. It has been a godsend when it comes to organizing my wardrobe. Index does have a paid version as well, which I do pay for, but it gives you all of these amazing stats about the clothes and the items that you own. So when you're adding a new item, you can actually choose to add how much it costs, where you bought it, etc. And then Index will take that information and tell you, you wear these colors the most, these are the seasons of clothing that you wear the most. These are the categories of clothing you wear the most. This is the cost per wear. Like there's just so many insights that you can get from their analytics. And as somebody who does really enjoy putting together outfits and I do really love clothes, this has really been a game changer in how I spend, but also how I see my wardrobe. I did recently use it to plan outfits for my Asia trip for Taiwan and Tokyo, and being able to just see all of the outfits in one place made deciding what to wear when I was actually traveling so much easier. Plus, as soon as you plan the outfits, Index will gather all of the items that you use and just present to you a packing list. Like it's so, so nice. If you're sick of using pen and paper and then losing that slip of paper where you jotted down notes or jotted down a to-do list, I would highly recommend trying out GoodNotes. I've been using GoodNotes for years and years. There's been a few 
iPad note-taking apps that I've used over the years and honestly have really really enjoyed but I keep going back to GoodNotes. Over the last couple of years GoodNotes has had a lot of updates that I think has made it better and better and more intuitive to use. I personally use GoodNotes for taking notes on courses, on storyboarding, sometimes I will use it for like mood boarding as well. I have a reading journal in there, it just really is kind of a all around great notepad and scratch pad for ideating. I have artist friends who also love using it for designing or sketching out ideas or drafting out concepts for a design project. It really can be used in so many different ways. Some of the functions that I feel like are so genius are scribble to erase. That one is great for me because I do take notes on my iPad. There's now spell correction even when you're handwriting, which is also nice if you're a student. There's audio recording so you can record lectures or courses that you're attending. The UI is super simple and easy to use and very organized because you can create notebooks, you can create folders, and kind of have everything laid out in the exact way that you want. They now have a marketplace in the app as well, which is nice, but there's not that much on it right now. But if you're ever looking for a planner template, a reading journal template, a project management template, whatever it is, you can find a ton of amazing templates on Etsy for a very reasonable price. I actually bought this reading journal template that I've been using for like two or three years now that I am still obsessed with. It just works so well. So hopefully their marketplace will continue to grow and some of these amazing template sellers will start putting their goods on there. But really GoodNotes is great because there are so many people that create these templates for the app. And of course, you can always create your own template as well. I do want to do a quick mention for iFont Maker as well because I loved using it with GoodNotes. There was a period where I wanted to be able to do a little bit of typing note taking on my iPad as well, but have it show up like I was handwriting, especially in my reading journal. So what I did was download iFont Maker, which is exactly that. It helps you create a font based on your handwriting and you essentially just write the letters from A to Z and the app will actually create the font for you. I believe there is a one-time fee to get access to the app and actually create the font, but I think it was like $12.99 or something like that, and then you can create as many fonts as you want. It's unnecessary, but it really is such a fun tool to use, and now I have a font that is based on my handwriting. I almost feel like it's kind of redundant to mention Notion these days because I pretty much talk about it in all of my videos, but Really, truly, I'm still such a diehard Notion fan, but especially on the iPad, I've really, really been liking it. It's another one of those apps that I feel like when it first came out with the iPad app, I was like, mm, it's just not great. Especially being someone who uses Notion a lot on desktop, I couldn't get used to the differences on iPad. It just didn't feel as fully like fleshed out as it should have been. But now you can use the same shortcuts. Everything just feels more similar to the desktop experience, meaning I can just bring out my iPad with me now and be able to write, be able to look at my recipes, be able to plan for goals, be able to ideate for videos, be able to talk to my contractors. Like everything for me happens in Notion. So having this app be improved has been a godsend. On desktop, I really like using Notion with Notion Web Clipper because there are certain articles that I just want to save for a specific piece of writing or video or I actually use Notion to manage my entire like wish list as well. So being able to quickly save sites to my Notion helps a lot. But with your iPad, you don't even need the extension. You can just browse your sites, hit share, share it to Notion, and then it lets you choose what board you want to add it to. I definitely use it for my personal wish list the most. Whenever I'm just browsing online shops, I will just save certain things to my wish list and let it live in that wish list like a holding cell so I'm not impulse buying buying anything, but I do find it really useful when I'm doing research for videos and for writing as well. Lastly, if you've heard of the Pomodoro technique, you'll really enjoy this app, I think. It's called Flow. It is the most minimal and easy to use Pomodoro timer that I have tried and I really do enjoy it. There is a desktop app as well that lets you have the timer on like your menu bar or just open sitting on your desktop, but something about having your timer separate on your desk really makes a difference for me. I think it's just kind of knowing that there's a physical thing 
keeping track of what you need to be focusing on. The app itself, like I said, is really easy. It does the 25 or 30 or 40 minute timer. You can set it to whatever you want and then it gives you a small break and then you can decide how long you want that break as well. And then so you can go through your day and just do these really like short bursts of focus sessions. And it's a great way to really train your attention span to be able to do deep work. Nowadays, my Pomodoro timers are not for 25 minutes, they're for like an hour or two hours because I know that I'm about to get so deep into editing or writing or whatever it is that I'm working on, but still kind of having that timer on hand so that I can follow my schedule and get through my to-do list in the day really helps me. Plus the fact that it is so minimal and visually pleasing makes it nice to have kind of sitting on my desk as well. So flow timer on my iPad propped up on my desk while I work has been kind of like a little productivity hack for me. I feel like there's still so many apps that I've been testing out that I want to share with you, not just for the iPad, but for the iPhone and the MacBook as well. I personally love testing out new software, new apps, new tools, and then figuring out like, okay, who is the ideal person for this app and how can I integrate this into like a typical workflow? It really does bring me so much joy. So please let me know if you want me to share more of the apps that I use every day or I've started to try and give you my review. I hope this video found you at the right time and helped you kind of demystify how you can use your iPad more. Honestly, I'm so happy that I have my iPad now because once I started to figure out how I can use it better and actually use it to make my workflow more productive, I feel like I can't live without it now. Again, if you've been trying to figure out how you can utilize AI better in your workflow as well, which honestly, it's time. Like just integrate it into your workflow and make it work for you because at the end of the day, it is a tool and it's meant to work for you, not the other way around but definitely check out that free resource that I was talking about because they have so many suggestions on there and I have no doubt that you will find something on there that will help your workflow. But that's it. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in my next video. Bye!